Hello, my name is Vasa Juvonen. I'm a senior program manager in SharePoint Engineering. This is the Setup Office 365 Tenant section for training module getting started with SharePoint Framework. In this module, we'll concentrate on how to actually set up your Office 365 Tenant and what are the things to consider within the tenant um, so that you can do SharePoint Framework development. So let's actually move on uh, to actually do for the requirements uh, for your Office 365 tenant. The requirements are relatively simple. Uh, you need to have an existing uh, Office 365 tenant or you can sign up for Office 365 developer tenant. You can actually get an Office 365 developer tenant from Office and developer program. When you have the tenant, uh, you need to have an app catalog site collection. And this is specifically needed when you actually want to do final testing of your client side web part uh, without hosting it from your local uh, local host. So the app catalog is only needed when your web part development is completed and you want to actually do the final verification by deployment of the web part and testing that without the local Node.js running within your machine. Technically, uh, on the tenant level, you can use any Office 365 tenant as well. So you don't have to use an Office 365 developer tenant if you have an existing tenant uh, that SharePoint framework development can be done on top of it as well. For actual testing, you also need to have a site collection created within your tenant. This could be a developer site collection or a normal, normal site collection. It really doesn't matter for SharePoint framework development. The developer side collections are more targeted for adding model development, but they're not needed really for SharePoint framework development. And then as a final step, you'll be using uh, online workbench uh, for testing your code uh, and testing the access on the actual SharePoint lists, for example, through your REST APIs. The detailed setup uh, for required steps uh, and step-by-step -step, uh, guidance is available from AKM, AKMS SPFX as setup tenant URL. So how do I actually sign up for Office 365 tenant if you do not have an existing tenant on your consumption? Easiest way to do that is to sign up to Office Developer Program. So you'll go to devtodos.com slash devprogram and you sign up uh, for this uh, program. That, that will send you, or the program uh, registration uh, will uh, send you then a, a welcome email with a sign up for Office 365 tenant. Currently, Office 365 developer tenants can have up to 25 licenses, so you can really mimic the behavior of your customizations in the scenarios where the end users would not be an administrator, which is always a good practice uh, for the development. When you have the tenant, uh, then the key point to notice and create is the app catalog site. The app catalog site isn't created by default for all of Office 365 tenants. SharePoint Framework solutions are then deployed uh, to that tenant using the app catalog uh, when they are ready for distribution. The basic development can, however, happen uh, without this app catalog site. The actual testing uh, of the client-side web part can then happen, for example, in the developer site collection. Technically, developer site collection is targeted for adding model development, but you basically need to have still a location to do your SharePoint Framework solution testing as well, or where you actually access the SharePoint Framework online workbench. So this site collection could be out of the box theme site, or it could be something uh, else as well. Again, up to you based on your business requirements. When you actually need to do SharePoint online testing, you can find a SharePoint Workbench uh, from underneath for every single site, site and a site collection within a SharePoint online. You can easily extend the URL with an underscore layout and dash uh, slash workbench ASPX, and that's where the online workbench is located. There is no links for this location uh, directly from the UI because this is considered to be a developer uh, behavior. And this is, like mentioned, this is hosted and available across all of the different site collections within your uh, SharePoint online tenant, so you don't specifically need to have a developer site collection to get access on this. Let's actually have a, a more detailed look on the steps and verifications uh, within the tenant level uh, in a live demo. In this video, we'll have a look on how to set up your Office 365 tenant uh, available for the SharePoint framework development.
First of all, uh, where do you actually get the Office 365 tenant? You can get a free Office 365 developer tenant by joining Microsoft Office 365 developer program. And you can find uh, this um, page uh, from the address of dev.office.com slash dev program. And from here, uh, you can say join now. If I click that one, uh, I'm being redirected to this page uh, where I'm uh, signing in to the developer program, uh, giving uh, or providing some additional information on myself and what I'm actually planning to do. This will essentially give you access on the developer tenant. And after when you have the developer tenant, then you can start configuring that to be ready for SharePoint framework. Now, what do we need to have for SharePoint frame framework development? We do have a nice documentation available in the devtodofs.com slash SharePoint. Uh, so if you go devtodofs.com slash SharePoint uh, and set up your developer tenant, and this is essentially walking through step by step and this, uh, the needed uh, actions to be completed to have readiness for SharePoint framework development. What it basically means is that when you have that Office 365 developer tenant or your existing Office 365 tenant, because SharePoint Framework works across all of the tenants in Office 365, you need to ensure that you have an app, ca app catalog available. And you can easily uh, do that or create the app catalog or confirm that it's available by going to the central uh, SharePoint admin center, clicking the apps from the left menu, and then clicking app catalog uh, in the selection. And this essentially will show you if the app catalog is available. So in my case, because the app catalog is available, I'm being redirected to the app catalog. Um, and that's uh, essentially the site collection in here. If the site collection or the app catalog would not have been created yet, uh, that would be also the location where the needed information, like the URL, which you want to use for your app catalog would be requested. So that's how we get the app catalog available. Technically, app catalog is only needed when you are hosting uh, your web part in a production-like way in your tenant. So you can absolutely still do SharePoint uh, framework development without an app catalog as well. But when we are deploying SharePoint solutions, SharePoint framework solutions to the tenant, that's when we use the app catalog. Now, then you need to have a site, and that's pretty straightforward. So we need to have a site collection. Uh, where do we actually do development, and where do we want to actually use the SharePoint Online Workbench? That could be actually any site. It doesn't have to be a developer site collection. It can be a developer site collection. Developer site collections have specific configurations, but those are mainly for the adding development. So there's nothing specific around the SharePoint framework development, which would require developer site collection to be created. So it's again up to you if you want to use a native whatever uh, team uh, site collection within your tenant or if you want to use a developer site collection within your tenant. Now when I, we, uh, when I have the site collection available uh, that also means that I have uh, access uh, to a workbench, my SharePoint Online workbench, which essentially means that in, uh, I can test my development or the web parts in the context of SharePoint Online. So I can already execute queries against the lists uh, which are available. And this one uh, you can easily access by extending uh, your site collection URL with an underscore layouts, 15 and workbench. That's where the SharePoint Online workbench is. Um, and the prefix here is the actual site collection URL. So if you wanna test uh, against some specific list in a, some specific uh, site collection, you would absolutely use that one as the prefix uh, for the before the underscore layout uh, definition. That's where the online workbench actually is located. So just to make sure that everything is working fine within your machine, uh, we can double check that one as well. So in my case, uh, so this is essentially one of the tutorial web parts. So tutorial hello world web parts, so as simplistic web part as possible, which is also available obviously in a GitHub uh, under the SharePoint organization. And there's a lot of other samples available in the GitHub for you to consume and learn from as well. So what I have here, and this is the Hello World web part, so I can easily test that being hosted on a SharePoint Online Workbench by doing call observe. And if I do no browser, uh, that essentially means that the web part will be served from my local Node.js 
but we won't be starting a browser against the local workbench, uh, against the local workbench. You can do that, then that's absolutely fine, and you can still go to the online workbench and do a request, um, and you will still see your web parts being available. So there we go. Uh, we are now being hosted without opening up a browser. If I go back on my workbench, SharePoint Online workbench, and let's actually refresh this. We can then see our Hello World web part uh, being available within this site collection. So if I now come here, uh, I can see my Hello World web part. If I click that one, uh, we can see that getting rendered uh, properly. So this fellow is actually coming, hosted. Uh, the JavaScript which is rendering this uh, web part here is hosted uh, from your local workbench, which we can actually see here. And this way you can also do development uh, dynamically uh, within your Visual Studio Code or whatever is your preferred IDE and then you can immediately test your changes and behavior in the SharePoint Online Workbench um, because it's getting your code is getting served from your local host towards SharePoint Online but it's running in the context of SharePoint Online. And that's pretty much it. Uh, key point to remember, uh, key points to remember on here uh, was the devtrofs.com slash dev program. That's where you can get a free developer tenant. And then uh, setting up your Office 365 tenant uh, guidance and steps are available within our official SharePoint framework documentation. Like you saw in the, in the demo as well, uh, the easiest way to verify that everything is working fine is quite simply uh, scaffold a new client-side web port and host that within the SharePoint Online workbench. If your web port is uh, very uh, available there properly, you can then easily access and, and do development within the SharePoint Online and your tenant is working properly as well. So, in this module, we went through uh, the configuration of for Office 365 tenant and where you can actually also sign up for a free developer tenant. We also talked, uh, talked about how to verify that your Office 365 tenant is properly uh, working. Steps are relatively simple, but it's better to have a reference uh, for you to have a look on and follow the steps when you're setting up things if you're not familiar with Office 365 development. If you're looking more guidance related on SharePoint Online or SharePoint on-premises development, please have a look on the SharePoint Patterns and Practices initiative. This is our official uh, community-driven uh, initiative where we work together with community and provide code samples, solutions, reusable components, guidance documentations. We have community calls. The, the areas are on SharePoint Framework, SharePoint Adding Model, Microsoft Graph, and Office 365 APIs in general. AKMS SharePoint PMP is the easiest address to remember where you can find all of the existing resources on SharePoint PMP. Thank you for watching.